develop the demon hand while at the same time maintain the Buddha's heart. Demon and Buddha, you might say they are both very two different sides. Yeah, you need both. Today's video is a brand new video with Master Xie Hong Yi talking about my favorite philosophy and concept that he shared with us. Demon hand, Buddha heart. Today's video was made possible at mulliganbrothers.com and I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who supported us. As you guys are aware, the journals did sell out very fast and we have a very small quantity of journals left. There's actually 50 going back up on the website today. It's one per person, I think, but um, yeah, there's only a few guys. So this is the only announcement we're gonna make of the journals. Once they are gone, they are gone. Uh, but thank you to everybody who supported us. As always, all the profits go back into making this content and getting our film crew around the world to make this Inspire Change move movement possible. But the, the philosophy in this video, this was a very, I'd never heard this before. I didn't realize it was a, is a principle or a philosophy, but demon hand, Buddha heart, and it means to have the demon hand that you've got that ambition, you've got that insight, that, uh, that instinct to take and to, to take what you need to take and also to be able to fight when you need to fight. But when you have a Buddha heart, you can do it with the conscience of having a good heart. Master Shihang Yi is going to explain it much better than I can. But having two demon hand, demon heart, or Buddha heart, Buddha hand, they don't go as well. This philosophy, this idea, is super, super interesting. For me, I think if people take this on board, you can have success, you can have ambition, you can get fulfillment, but also do it whilst helping other people, whilst being nice and kind and having fulfillment in, a, in another area of your life. Your friends, your family, your loved ones, a really important aspect of your life, but also to be able to have that sharpness, to be able to take when you need to be able to take for the right reasons, from, from the Buddha heart perspective. Anyway, I will stop talking. Master Xie Hong Yi is gonna explain this incredible philosophy. Let's jump into it. Also, please consider supporting Master Xie Hong Yi at Shaolin.online with the link in the description. The, the teachings to have a, a strong body. We talk about, you know, mental, mental strength and, um, uh, the mind quite a lot, but I think when when we focus on that, we overlook the physical body. And we're talking about strength training and and things like that prior to this interview. And how important is it to have a physically capable body? Okay. If uh, in the recent times, for example, when I looked at different interviews, there's one word which like starts to. Maybe it seems like it, but it pops up more often, which is the warrior. Mm. Yeah, it pops up a little bit, uh, yeah, quite often. And of course, you can be a mental warrior, meaning you're always strict, you're always strong in the mind, you keep going. Yes, of course, this is something that you need. But at the same time, taking it a little bit more literal, a little bit more martial, it also means a warrior that you at the same time have the physical abilities to interfere. A warrior is sent. A warrior has or feels the obligation if something is out of balance out there, I'm gonna fix it. Or you try. And if you try and you fail, you try harder next time. But you don't give up on that statement that you're giving to yourself so and in that sense and especially that the Shaolin warriors are embedded in the field of martial arts the full picture is you need to have a capable body but if I would express it like this too often maybe there will be a group of people that say yeah but I can't anymore because of this this and this issue so how can I still participate in the Shaolin teachings you can of course that's why I'm telling this the, the whole time that it's not about this martial aspect but if you want to have a glimpse into how in the past Shaolin warriors were living why they were called like this it's possible to find it out 
and that means you are using methods to bring something out of the body that the average person does not have it's not it's not only that you're physically able it is something very strange it is something that inside of you you access something different in you there is a famous saying which is called um, Gui Shou Fo Shin demon's hand Buddha heart It's an old Shaolin saying, develop the demon hand while at the same time maintain the Buddha's heart. Demon and Buddha, you might say they are both very two different sides. Yeah, you need both. You need both. Demon hand, demon heart, no good. Then you are going to become a threat for this world. demon hand, Buddha heart, well, to be able to access something and then decide upon your heart whether to use it or not. I think this is what we're looking for. Yeah, And the physical abilities is important, of course, um, but there's more to it. I think something a lot of people are interested in is the process of becoming a master, like how you have to, where you have to get your knowledge from and the sort of um, the journeys and, well, the journey of it in general, but the journeys you have to make to, to get that knowledge and wisdom. So in Asia, it's like this, either your student or your master, simple. Until you are not a master, you're still student. So this is how somebody in Asia still knows, let's say, where he is standing. In Europe, we have systems. Systems, for example, graduation systems. You have to make an exam. You have to, for example, show some forms, show some skills, show some abilities that you have learned within the last three months, for example, and then you get your certificate. And here in Europe, it's well known, you get some type of belts. In the system, the Kung Fu system that I studied in the past, it was the Shaolin Green Dragon system, it's called. Shaolin Green Dragon. That system, that time consisted of no belt, then you got the white belt, then the white yellow, half belts, so white and yellow, white yellow, 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 orange, orange orange, green, 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 blue, 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 purple, 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 brown, 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 red, red, black, red, black. That was like one of the systems that I went through in the past. And every time when you want to reach another graduation level, there are some forms that you need to show. And like I said, some abilities and skills that you have to learn merge together with theoretical lessons in every in every graduation step and it took me around with 18 with 18 uh, i received the first let's say the first master title the first mastership title in the field of shaolin green dragon so that means it's like a normal test. You go through a lot of testing. And yeah. And afterwards, when we started then to get in contact with many more people, also, for example, in 2001, with the five first Shaolin masters that were sent from China to Germany to teach, that was like the next time where we had exchange with these type of masters. Yeah. 
And so this is the way that in terms of recognition and in terms of graduation, how you are becoming a master through testing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I cannot thank Master Shahangi enough and the Shaolin Temple Europe for allowing us in. This philosophy right here, when I heard it for the first time, absolutely blew my mind. I didn't realize until we've spoken to a few disciples as well, that this is a philosophy that is practiced in the Shaolin Temple Europe and temples all around the world. The idea to be a warrior, but to be able to do it with a good heart, it really strikes for me. Uh, it's, it's difficult to, to explain to people without it sounding um, quite off-putting. The idea of having ambition and wanting to be this huge film, this documentary company. We want to be the huge, biggest documentary company in the world and the biggest documentary producers in the world, the biggest film producers in the world. And it sounds quite materialistic and uh, dis discards everything else that's important. But the reason we want to do that, the reason we want to take that with our hands, with our, with our demon hands, is because it's from the idea of the Buddha heart. For us, the whole core of this stems from the Buddha heart, the, the philosophy of inspiring change, of helping others. For me, this stemmed from my trauma and my difficulties that I face and wanting to help other people. So it all stems from, a, from the good place, from every, so every decision's made from here. But you need to be able to take with this and you need to be able to, because this is what is going to help more people. This is what's going to help the movement and, and make it happen in a more ambitious way, happen on a bigger, larger scale. If it was all from here, yes, it would be pure. Yes, it would help the people around me. But the reach wouldn't be as much as if I, if I can take with this. And that's the way our philosophy has been. I wouldn't exactly articulate it like that. But when I heard Master Shahangi articulate it that way, it just pew, it was like a light bulb moment for me. This video was made possible by mulliganbrothers.com. So I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been to mulliganbrothers.com and bought a t-shirt, a journal. Uh, the posters are going to be coming out soon, ready for the year as well. The Memento Mori posters where you can really respect how much life you use and how much life we have with these Memento Mori posters. For me, I have one on my fridge. It's a constant reminder that time is extremely precious. Um, so all the profits from the website, as always, go back into making this content possible. And everybody who hit that join button down below, thank you so much. You also are a massive part of this. Everybody who's become a producer on the channel, this blows my mind. So thank you to everybody. Have a blessed and productive day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.